we are diving into a new kit on the block, sodium ion batteries. Have you ever wondered how these stack up against lithium iron phosphate? In this video you will find out. Are sodium ion batteries the future? And more importantly, are they worth your investment? Stick around till the end for a comprehensive financial breakdown. Let's start by highlighting the unique traits of a sodium ion battery. I received a datasheet for a 220 amp hour sodium ion battery. Let's look at it and see if we can find something interesting. The nominal voltage of the cell is 3.1 volts. The charge voltage is 3.95 and the low voltage cutoff is 1.5. The energy density is 155 watt hours per kilogram, which I will later compare to lithium iron phosphate. The battery can be charged from minus 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, but at a lower C rate of 0.2. This makes this battery unique, because lithium cannot be charged below freezing. Standard charging happens at 0.5 C. C rate is the amount of current you can charge or discharge a battery with. In this case, you can charge with 110 amps. Discharge happens at a C rate of 1 in this case 220 amps. The cycle life is not different from lithium batteries. This datasheet specifies 4000 cycles, while the battery remains 80% of its capacity. I assume we can extend the cycle life by having a lower depth of discharge, just like lithium. Let's talk about the safety of a sodium ion battery. Extreme temperature conditions of up to 130 degrees Celsius or 266 degrees Fahrenheit showed no explosion or fire. If we short circuit, there is no fire or explosion. Although I would expect to see some swelling, similar to lithium batteries. Overcharging and over discharging didn't lead to significant issues. A penetration test with a steel rod didn't cause any explosion or fire. I cannot check these claims, because they were written in a datasheet. Leave a comment if you want to see me do these tests myself. I have seen claims that the cells can be transported at 0 volts, but the document specifies that the battery is stored and shipped at 20 to 30% state of charge. It didn't mention anything about shipping at 0 volts. These safety tests prove that sodium ion is similar to lithium iron phosphate regarding safety. Now let's take a look at the voltage chart. Unlike the flat curve of a lithium iron phosphate battery, the sodium ion shows a different profile. This would make monitoring the state of charge easier with a voltmeter. Let's dive into the most interesting part. A comparison between a 230 amp hour lithium iron phosphate cell and a 220 amp hour sodium ion cell. Both cells promise 4000 cycles. Sodium ion is measured at 0.5 C while lithium is measured at 1C. This is not a problem for solar installations, but could be troublesome for the EV industry. Sodium ion batteries use more abundant materials compared to lithium batteries. This is a game changer in terms of sustainability and long-term availability. Sodium ion batteries offer 155 watt hours per kilogram, while lithium iron phosphate steps up to 180 watt hours per kilogram. Higher energy density means more power packed into the same weight. A 220 amp hour sodium ion battery has the same dimensions and weight as a 280 amp hour lithium battery. I don't see the energy density being a problem for stationary solar power installations. Both batteries show robust safety features. Neither caught fire or exploded in the tests. Sodium ion batteries charge at 0.5 C and discharge at 1C, while lithium can handle a faster charging and discharging rate of 1C, so lithium can be charged at double the current. This is where it gets interesting. Sodium ion can charge from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius, or 14 to 113 degrees Fahrenheit. Lithium on the other hand cannot charge below freezing, giving sodium ion an advantage in cold weather. We must note that charging should be limited to 0.2 C when it's below freezing. Sodium ion operates between 1.5 
and 3.95 volts, while lithium ranges from 2.5 to 3.65 volts. As for costs, the sodium ion is more expensive for now. Let's take a look at that in the following slide. I know that diving into DIY solar power can sometimes be overwhelming, especially regarding wire sizes and fuses. To help you out, I've put together 7 free solar diagrams that simplify these concepts. If you're interested, sign up for my email list through the first link in the description and get your free diagrams today. I have gotten a few quotes from wholesalers in China. And sodium is more expensive now than it is for lithium. This is because there are not many factories yet that can produce this kind of battery. I expect these prices to decrease once the manufacturing chains are in place. The manufacturing process is similar to lithium, which would make it easier to adapt. Let's shift gears from theory to real-world scenarios. Here are a few key points to remember when considering sodium ion batteries. The voltage range of sodium ion batteries might seem like just a number, but it has significant practical implications. For instance, if you're using a non-programmable inverter, the lower voltage limit of sodium ion batteries could trigger an early shutdown, leaving you with unused power. I still have to experiment with this when the battery cells arrive, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out. The BMS will need to be programmed manually. You cannot apply the same settings as a lithium battery. Overall, this chemistry is promising. The fact that it needs less rare earth materials is great. The weight per kilowatt hour will be a bit more, but this will not be a problem for stationary applications. Please like the video if you found it helpful and watch these videos next.